a wild Ted appears. Hello, hello. Welcome back from your vacation. Oh, yeah, it's good to be back. But it's also really great to be on vacation. I'm excited to get caught up. Well, we, we just put everything on hold while you were gone, Ted. We didn't no! say it so. The only major decision was to remove OTEP 66. No, sad. It's officially Troll Ted Day. I am particularly excited to get caught up with the state of the 0.3 spec and uh, beta planning. I don't know how much that is relevant to this meeting. 0.3 spec certainly is. I, I would say very, <laughs> very. <laughs> and, and that is mostly because we are behind mm. the, the, the expected date. Mm. Shock. Um, on the other hand, we only have a pair of issues to mention about that, so we don't have to spend the entire hour. Oh, good. By the way, back, uh, yeah, it's great to have you back. It's good to be back. Thanks, Carlos. Okay, so let's wait a few minutes, I would recommend. Uh, I think Bogdan is probably going to make it. Uh, mm -hmm. As per the use, please uh, uh, sign in on the agenda and please add any agenda items. I know this sounds super weird, but it is vaguely unsettling to be one of like four people with their video on. I can turn my video if that makes everybody feel more in line. <laughs> Guessing people's time zones by the quantity of light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can guess. <clears throat> okay, I guess we can wait one more minute and then we can start. Okay, I suggest we start. I think that we are not getting Bogdan nor Yuri, but we could go ahead. Please do. 
Right. Okay, so the agenda is that the first item is the tagging, you know, for this release. Um, yeah, I hope we can actually make it. Uh, we still have two, uh, on the context propagation side, we still have two items. Um, they have been receiving a lot of reviews and we have been interacting um, both Alex and me on each PR. And I feel that we are very close. Um, they're having minor details in the last days, but I, I do feel we are very close there. Um, the only problem is that we need to get more actual um, approvals. We have been getting a lot of feedback, which is great, but we also need approvals when the time comes. Um, yeah, but I'm pretty confident that uh, if we focus on the very, on the most important parts of these PRs, we can merge them um, for this milestone. There will be other things that we might want to probably improve, but that can be done um, on the next milestone, you know, things that are not so important. And then we have the metrics update. Um, Josh, maybe you want to uh, say something? Yeah, hi. Um, so 430, PR 430 has an update to the API, adding observer, moving gauge, uh, and um, is, I think, ready. I um, addressed all the comments I had pending last night. And um, so if you're part of that review, especially Chris and Tyler um, and Rahul, um, very appreciated. I think please take another look and uh, approve. Only Chris has approved at this point, but I've all the feedback was very supportive, so I think it's it's ready to go. Um, and then I just want to mention that I think it's okay to snapshot <clears throat> 0 0.3 right now. Um, with that in, uh, there are two documents that are out of date still in the spec. They're not controversial. It's just that there's some there's there's extra text about all the user uh, all the API that is not updated yet. So there's another document <clears throat> that needs to be updated. <clears throat> and um, I think it's okay. I, perhaps what I should do is send a, a quick PR to say to update those documents, saying these are out of date. Uh, see how I'd like to see what other people think of that. Uh, the SDK specification will come next. Um, so that's a work in progress already. It's PR 347 or something like that. Um, I'm at this point interested in help. Uh, I've become a little a little fatigued by all this metric spec work, and um, it seems to me that others are um, both motivated and able. So I'm curious if uh, there are volunteers who would like to uh, pick up any of these tasks uh, that I just mentioned, um, because it, I seem to be the uh, bottleneck at this point. Uh, and I have a few other responsibilities. So uh, anyone who's interested, please talk to me. Uh, and I think that's it for metrics. Yeah, maybe we can uh, get somebody, you know, who's already involved, motivated on that. That, that would be great. Um, yeah. I have some people in mind. I just don't uh, let them talk to me. Um, nice. All right. Okay, that, that sounds good. So yeah, it sounds like we can do the actual tagging this uh, by the end of this week. So that, that sounds, sounds great. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there's a chance that I could update those two documents really quickly and nobody will disagree and we'll just get those merged, but we'll, we'll try. Great. Okay, great. Okay, so I will get started. Uh, we probably with either Ted or Bogdan or you, uh, Josh to uh, prepare the actual tagging. Okay, we can talk about that offline. Okay, um, the second item is about actual reviews. Um, and this is something related to the, uh, to, to, you know, to the previous PRs is that we really, really, really need more people paying attention to that. As I said, we really have a, a, a lot of people actually, you know, providing feedback, which is great. And it's something we really need, but we also need approvals. And because of the requirements, you know, it, I would have expected that it wouldn't have been so hard because we only need two approvals at the specification level but still it has taken a lot of time. Um, and one related issue is, was filled by Judy about um, that he he's feeling that there's not, uh, you know, a consistent state regarding votes. Um, Judy is not here, so I guess we can discuss that offline, but it's basically about the fact that we need less votes on the specification PRs and we need more votes like four 
or five for the OTEP. I agree that that's irregular and odd. Even though it's been convenient to get <laughs> to get work done in the spec repo, I would I would support changing it to be the same as the OTEP repo. Well, if you ask me, I think that OTEP related changes should need more votes. And other minor things in the specification to vote is fine. But OTEP related changes, they should need more. But first, we need I get more <clears throat> reviewing. Huh? Yeah, I, I think you're probably right. There's a judgment call. Like, for example, my metric spec is a big change right now. And I think it's, it's probably something that does deserve that many reviews. Please review that PR, everybody. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yes. And um, yeah, I just, uh, just remember that I think that everybody's concerned about speed. But if we don't get approvals, you know, this is going slower. So please, uh, I, I think that if we could try to actually put more attention on this, this would be really nice. Um, you know, um, especially with the, with the uh, beta that we are tr trying to target that was mentioned last week, you know, prior to KuCon or QCon, so yeah. Okay, uh, the next one, okay, low priority. Uh, Raise issue with at link after creation time. Um, I'll step in on this one quickly. Um, I wasn't present at the original uh, discussion when this characteristic was removed. I think it was removed uh, last year. I think Bogdan put in the PR. Um, I just uh, wanted to highlight a scenario where this would break the type of scenario I deal with frequently. And I wanted to get somebody to consider it to see whether an amendment is worthwhile or not. Um, having said that, obviously you guys have your hands full with a lot of issues, so no rush. I just wanted to kind of raise it as an issue. That's all. Yeah, I think, I think there was some discussion of allowing samplers to reconsider the decision, but I don't think that it's in scope for 0 0.3. So I think that we should probably punt this. Uh, I think the lasting solution is, you know, reconsidering the sampling decision, but we won't have that for 0 0.3. So let's punt. Happy with that. Um, can you just give me some rough understanding of when uh, uh, kind of would you be looking to address this type of issue after 0 0.3? No pressure. I just wanted to understand when is the right time to jump back in. Yeah. I would hop in and say we want to release a beta for uh, the mm -hmm. languages that got an initial uh, whatever that initial five or so languages. Um, and uh, if people are mostly satisfied with the point 0.3 version of the spec, we kind of want to get those into beta, and then we could start looking at, well, what's, what's awkward here in terms of practical reality? What do we need to shift and have that be part of the beta work? All right, thank you. Yeah. Ted, just to kind of clarify on that, it's mid-March is what we're looking for the beta, right? Okay. I think so. I actually added it the the last agenda item. Like, what's oh. the current state of beta? <laughs> so, yeah, mid March, mid March. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks for clarifying. All right. Um, the next item is please review Sam Con for messaging systems. Armin, uh, is Armin here? I am. Great. Okay. Maybe you want to elaborate on this. Um, well, it's the semantic conventions for mes messaging systems, and I opened it like mm -hmm. it three weeks almost ago and uh, didn't get any reviews so far. So please take a look. Okay, yeah, makes sense. I, I think you got, uh, you got uh, an approval from Josh. Okay, I will review that mm -hmm. myself. Um, yeah, definitely today. Sorry. Okay, yeah, that was a follow up for uh, Kevin Brockhoff's PR. And yeah. I think he got approvals for his PR as well. So yeah, it kind of goes together. Mm -hmm. Great. And yeah, please, um, yeah, Josh, you know, and me, we work at the same company. So we need <laughs> people from different companies giving an uh, approval. So please review, guys. OK, so the next item is. Um, Please reopen RPC SENCOM issues. Uh, yeah, Armin, maybe you want to mention this as well. Uh, yeah, those were closed uh, the second time without actually being resolved. And uh, I think Christian commented to have it reopened, but that was uh, missed apparently. So please do that. Okay. 
it's because RPC semantic conventions only cover and only allow uh, gRPC so far and not mm -hmm. RPC systems in general. So stuff like the RPC system being used and maybe also the RPC method being called should be part of the stack. And those were the issues tracking that to do. Yeah, I am not up to date, so I will review after this this call. But if anybody else, yeah, <clears throat> I'll have to take a look. But I'm I'm gonna make it my priority to be very responsive on specification issues. Seems All like right. this is the biggest bottleneck. Yep. Thanks. Great. Okay, the next item is uh, whether it, it is acceptable for six to add language specific methods, like convenience me methods mm -hmm. without a uh, specification change. Yeah, I raised this one because of a question in the GoSig uh, yesterday. And it seems like in this particular case, there are other SIGs encountering the same issue. So it is appropriate to raise at the spec level. The question is just, is this blocking or is this uh, a thing where we can do our own things and then harmonize after? Is that convenience methods on the API or just in the SDK? On the API. Yeah. Um, this is an, I, something that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, I haven't been talking about it just because I didn't want to distract, you know, from getting like the core beta stuff out the door. But um, it's certainly my experience from open tracing that there's lots and lots of convenience to be had um, and that we absolutely should have a package of like convenience and helper stuff as far as like, should it be mixed in with core API stuff or should it be a separate package? I don't know. Um, I would say the one thing I'm, I'm curious about is, uh, to me, there's like two kinds of convenience. The one where I think there should, doesn't need to be any approval or much too much thought is any, I would define a convenience method as one that calls down to lower level API methods, right? So if, as long as it's at like a higher level of abstraction, then like, of course, I think that's fine. And, you know, you don't need to, to have a spec change or something like that. Uh, if it's something that can't be implemented in that manner, I think that's sort of like a yellow flag of like, you know, is something really missing or wrong here? Okay, so it's the encapsulation boundary of if we're chain mutating private methods or otherwise allowing access to underlying things you wouldn't otherwise get. Great. Okay. That, that would be, yeah. That, if it's not doing that, then I would say it's like totally fine. Uh, yeah, I, I've approached this um, in the spec work by making a, a bullet in the spec that says optional. This is something that languages should probably consider. If they're going to do it, then do follow these recommendations. If you're not, there's justifiable. Like I was thinking about it last night. We've introduced a notion of a timer uh, metric instrument, which is just a measure instrument where you force the units to be correct and you and you force the you know the type to be correct for the the built-in type timing type of the language. Uh, this is just a convenience, but um, you, you can imagine there are SDKs that just like don't care if there's, if there's no built-in time type of your language, maybe you don't care. There's no time, like you have an execution environment with no clock, maybe that's possible. So it should just be list, I, I like to list those as optional in the, the, the spec. I would say this is a little bit of a segue to the next item on the list, if people are ready for that. Um, that, that particular method, um, when I looked at it, was about recording an error on a span. And um, I just wanted to highlight there are, there, there is some work in flight um, about recording errors. Um, the first two um, bullet points there are recording them as events. And the first one is mine. It's, it's really simple. Um, the second one is kind of an extension. Um, that this guy Vladimir made. I think there's been less eyes on it, but it works for logs in general. And I think it's definitely worth looking at. And yesterday, um, just to try to convince myself if one was a clear winner over the other, I wrote a little bit of code, which is in kind of the last comment on both of them. And I felt like both of them were actually super reasonable, but I felt like that code looks kind of like boilerplate and um, could definitely 
um, live in something like a span record error or something method. So um, I think once we get conventions around recording errors, we may find that we want one of these methods on our spans, most of us. Um, but at any rate, have a look at those things, comment on them, especially look at Vladimir's because I think his approach um, covers a little bit more than mine does. And then there's also an approach um, by, by Kevin Brockhoff for type span events. I think between these three, um, some sort of fusion between them, we can probably come up with a reasonable um, story for errors. I think this is probably not a V03 thing, but probably definitely a V04 thing. So. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't, he, I don't think there's enough time for this milestone, but this is something really important. And yeah, we really need to get more eyes to really do this in the next one. Yeah. Okay, so to wrap things back around to th this instant case of the Go stuff, basically we should go for it. And then if we need to change it for 0 0.4 when there's more specification around how we handle errors and we can tidy it up then. Great. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Um, okay, and uh, I, uh, Matt, do you want to elaborate more on the errors part? I guess that's all. Well, I don't know if you want to. I mean, yeah, I, I think that's all I had to say. If, if you do look at those comments and you look at the code that I wrote down there and you wanted to like write some up for your language too and just paste it in for, for fun or just to help kind of like, you know, lobby for, for one over, over the other, like that could be interesting. Um, and, and help us make a decision. Great. Perfect. I have a request uh, on that topic. Uh, actually, it's a little off topic, but I've, I would like to have a new Gitter Rooms to discuss errors for one and sampling for another. Um, I think that these, these topics are deep and um, we haven't discussed either enough, given what just uh, several of the recent conversations here. I don't know how to make a Gitter room though. So if someone could help, I'd like to create new two new rooms and I have things to say about both of these. Sure, I can help you with that, Josh. Thanks, so cool. Sampling and errors. And Ted, if you could just mention that in the general channel so people are aware of that. Yep. Otherwise it will exist and nobody knows. I'll all. be happy to do that as well if you want. Yeah. Fantastic. And the final item on the agenda is a beta planning. Like, what's the current state? Uh, so, yeah, I don't know who, who wrote this. I wrote this. Uh, I'm just getting back, and I did hear there is uh, some planning. I did think I saw uh, a, something Morgan had written down, but I was just wow. curious like uh, how widely all of that's been discussed and sort of what the current, current state is. I don't think it's been discussed in this room enough. We did mention it, I think last week. Um, and I have only part of the conversation um, to speak to right now, but I, I know that in the metrics SIG call last week, uh, there was, uh, a little bit of discussion about metrics views. Um, we use this term to describe sort of alternate configuration of aggregations, potentially multiple aggregations on metrics. Um, census, Open Census had this, and um, I, I was a little, uh, I, I guess this, things, things went unsaid since last summer, but, but basically I always considered this to be an SDK specific API because the mechanisms you're gonna to use to implement these are gonna uh, vary widely. The supports that you're gonna have are gonna vary widely. Um, but that's not necessarily a open and closed case. Um, you, you certainly can identify a subset of views that are sort of universal at some level. Um, calls for a way for users to be able to configure their own aggregations, potentially directly at the API level. Um, this, this was said without any further discussion that that is a requirement for the beta and there's just not time. And I'd like to call it an SDK API, even though uh, I, don't, I don't know what people think, but I, I see like with sampling, there are so many ways to implement this type of functionality that we're, we're hurting ourselves by pinning, it, pinning down an API right now. So uh, 
I would like to leave this out of the beta, and I hope other, others agree, but I, I don't think that the Open Census team quite realizes that this has happened. And for the most part, I think we need Morgan to get on the call and, and talk to this. Okay. So it sounds like there's been some discussions, but something that we need is, well, it sounds like we need like two basic things. One is like a posting of like, uh, what does it mean to get uh, a language repo to beta? Like what do we wanna see in there before it gets called beta? And then I think the other thing is once we're in beta, does that change like our release patterns? Are we trying to, to tighten certain things up? Uh, Liz, I know you had done some work in the past. <laughs> Sorry, I caught you just as you're eating. Uh, I know you had <laughs> done some work in the past on on proposal for like what a beta would mean, but I think you had walked it back a little bit as maybe being too complex. I'm wondering uh, if there's been- Yeah, what I'd originally proposed was, you know, having this discussion of like, hey, you know, beta does not mean that you're not going to be expected to update your SDK, right? Like, you know, please update your SDK regularly or else you will potentially be sad and broken. So we may as well, you know, be proactive about breaking you rather than, than have you be surprised and sad. Okay. But then I walked it back because it was excess of complexity at the time. Okay. So there's like, how do we run a beta? Is seems like that's still something we, we need to get down on paper and get some agreement on. Um, yeah, right. Like it's a two way contract, right? It's the contract of our users need to understand that this is stuff that is evolving. And then on the flip side, we need to be prepared to release often and on a more predictable cadence than during alpha. Great. I also, I was just looking at the list of the launch notes there. Like, I just think we're setting ourselves up for failure by saying this can be done in mid-March unless we cut scope. And like some of the stuff in here is, is hasn't even begun. Like no language implementation has an OTLP exporter right now. And it's pretty close to March. So I, I'm just like, and that's not an API change either. So is, is do we really need to get beta on saying every language has spec every feature plus all this list of like support that is not part of the API? I think it's it's gonna gonna create a, a, a miss essentially. So, you, so I, I, I would vote to cut scope. Like OTLP export doesn't have to be done in mid March, but maybe that is the thing that we should all be emphasizing and focused on. Right. In other words, there's there's two kinds of things that we want. One are like big lifts, right? Like adding metrics to the API uh, or like a big SDK or API change to conform to the 0.3 version of the spec. So maybe we should say uh, the conforming or implementing, implementing the 0.3 spec is most important. And then things like exporters and other stuff where th those are purely additive uh, additive changes, right? Uh, not necessarily things that are related to the spec. Uh, you don't necessarily have to gate the starting the beta on having those things. Uh, beta is more about saying like, this API, this SDK kind of looks the way we think uh, the final one is gonna look. Um, and so please try it out. Does that seem like a good interpretation? Of, of your request. Uh, was that a question to me? <laughs> yeah, it was a question to you, Josh. You're, I don't know. Saying, like, uh, we should gatekeep on just implementing the point three spec, but not on like, there's like additional stuff like- Yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff listed there that's not really quite in the spec and it's it's stuff that the SDK spec says. So that's that's kind of the high level for me. Is are we are we finishing the API and the SDK for beta right now, or is it just the API? I think just the API is reasonable, but I think the rest, if we just throw all that in, it's hopeless. Not that I want to. By be the way, what, would that include the collector, by the way, and the protocol, right? You mentioned or that, well, the collector work is underway. Like that looks like it's going to happen, but but every language. I mean, this document says every language is going to have an exporter for that, uh, you so know, that, and okay. Mm -hmm. in addition to other things that we've you know, have in flight. Okay, I see your point. Cool. Okay, I'll I'll follow up with uh, Morgan, and I think we we have a community meeting tomorrow afternoon. Um, Maybe we can get a hustle going and have 
some some kind of proposal ready for that community meeting um because i would like to get that nailed down and then like up on the pro project status page of of the website um in a way that's a little more concrete um oh by the way there was some related action in the community repo there was like a maturity matrix i think liz you and uh bhs were working on like yep that's matrix. correct uh bhs was proposing that we publicly communicate the state of each of that we don't have to reach beta across the board for everything that we can declare individual pieces beta ready piece by piece instead okay great um, I'll have a look at that. That seems super relevant to this. At least making sure there's alignment between what we're saying in, in that maturity matrix and what we're saying like a beta is. Yep, that would be super great to have. Um, <laughs> yeah, we put the change in the community repo, but it's not uh, firm and committed, so we can make changes uh, to make it conform to the launch plan. Okay. Would it help if this beta release plan was a little bit more like prioritized rather than just kind of a list of here's all the things that are going to be here kind of like an ordering of like here's the order in which you should probably do things um mm -hmm. in case you are going to miss at least you have these like you know critical components or are you know at some reasonable level down that list just a thought Um, Liz, are you interested in working on that beta contract? I personally believe that it would be most appropriate for someone who is on the technical committee to drive it. I am on governance, but not technical. Okay. I will find... So th this is why Ben and I like proposed that this thing exist, but you know, we are not members of the technical subcommittee. Yeah, I can probably help with that, but uh, yeah. Well, really we can collaborate, you and me. We, we can discuss that offline. Okay. Oh, and there's a link to the maturity matrix. <clears throat> um, do people have other questions about beta? It sounds like basically getting a launch plan to like a proposal stage, hopefully for the community meeting tomorrow to get it. SIG maintainers to sign off on and then getting that up on the website is the next big step. So I'm going to try to bottom line that. Uh, so just to clarify, uh, is the open telemetry specification repos milestone for 0 0.3, the list of PRs remaining in order to close up to beta? Good question. Yeah, sorry, the, the two ones related to context propagation are listed. About metrics, Josh might know. I'm sorry, I missed the question. So uh, if we're looking at the um, the actual milestone in the specification repo for the point three release, the question is, is that is that accurate? Or is there uh, issues uh, missing from it? Uh, I mentioned earlier that there are two documents that have not been updated. They will be glaringly inconsistent. Um, and it's either something I can do like in three hours or it's something that we should just update to say, this is out of date. We're going to follow, follow up in, you know, a week. And it's like, there are two documents on metrics. One was, this is the high level big picture. This is what we're doing. And then here's the sort of detail on each method for a user's perspective. That has not been updated that second document. Okay. And then th there's a missing document that would do the same for the sort of SDK facing API. Like these are the methods that you can call on a meter. Here's how you get a meter and that sort of thing. Like detail. Okay. And those are actually listed. Uh, They're not, there's no, there's no issues for these things okay. that I'm talking about. There's a couple more issues that have to get listed here. Okay. I'll follow up with you on that. Thanks. One other question on, uh, on the uh, the beta: Do we want to have the standardized attribute names for uh, various attributes in the like the API uh, as part of the beta? You mean the semantic conventions? Yes, that's the one. Uh, I wouldn't gatekeep starting the beta on having all of those in there. 
but um, I guess that would be my reflexive answer, getting back to like cutting scope. Um, okay. Because if you change those, you're not breaking the API, right? You're just changing the data that's getting reported by the plugin. That's right. It's actually some kind of API, right? The semantic conventions. Mm. Yeah. We'll probably have helper methods and things, right, to, to produce this data. Yeah, with it being key value pairs, it looks so so innocent, but actually it's an API. It just doesn't have method names. It has key value pairs. Yeah. Which is even worse. <laughs> Uh, it's true. Um, I think maybe related to that, um, uh, this is maybe under beta planning uh, or maybe a separate agenda item, but um, just writing, starting to build the ecosystem and writing uh, plugins for various uh, libraries and frameworks. Uh, I think there's been some debate about like, where do those go? Should those be in um, like the core language repos or should those be in separate repos? Do we do one thing for the beta and then move them out somewhere else later? Um, uh, just from talking to different things, it seems like different working groups have, have different ideas about what they prefer there. Um, but I'm curious, does anyone have like, are there any SIG maintainers on the call who have like questions or, or issues around uh, where the plugins need to live for the time being. Hey, Doug, uh, yeah, I would love not to make that a, a beta issue. Um, it's, it's at least in the Python sig, it's easy for us if we can keep them all in the same repo for now and then split it out in the templated repos later, especially okay. because as we make changes to the API, it's much easier to test them when we're all using the same, you know, bit of CI. Sure. Okay, that sounds it's, great. It also becomes in, impossible or very difficult, I should say, to fix plugins one at a time when they're different repos if you're making sweeping API changes still. So I think putting, like, we can't start separating these things until beta is here. Otherwise, it's just going to lead to broken plugins. Great. Yeah, actually, we had the same for the open tracing shim layer, and it works great. So yeah, I, I, could, I could support this. We can split them later. Okay. Um, I do have uh, one request on that front. Uh, it's not a huge deal, but we have the registry on the website and it would be great. It's maybe just a background task for someone, but it would be great to start listing all the plugins that have been written uh, up in that registry. Um, uh, I'll see if I can get some people to help with that. Um, just to start adding visibility to the project, when people come to that website. So maybe make a note here. And likewise, if, <clears throat> if you want to write plugins somewhere that aren't in the core registry and you're just maintaining themself, maintaining it yourself because that's easier, uh, this is a way to, to not have those plugins just get lost. Uh, so it also suggests for people, I think this maybe came up in the Java, JavaScript SIG where they were trying to put the brakes on writing plugins because they didn't want to maintain so many. I'm not sure. Yeah, we just have a lot already. They yeah. have approaching 20 now, 15, something like that. More than anyone else, I think, for sure. Yeah. So this would just be my suggestion rather than saying, like, don't write plugins. Like, you could just put them somewhere else and then list them in the registry. And then, you know, if they get broken or out of date, it's just the responsibility of the plugin maintainer to, to, to deal with that. Uh, Can I ask a dumb question? Yeah. What, what do we mean by plugins? This isn't the term that I've been heard. I've heard it all kicked around in these meetings at all. Maybe I think we use the term plugin and instrumentation maybe uh, interchangeably. Do our exporters the same? Are those also? A exporters are, I think we have two kinds of plugins really right now. One is like an SDK plugin, like an exporter. And then the other are, um, maybe we should actually standardize our language here, but um, the ecosystem that consumes open tracing has usually like libraries and frameworks. You have some kind of like instrumentation library that you're plugging into that framework or it's wrapping that framework. Um, so basically all the instrumentation packages, uh, maybe that's a, a better term. Uh, and those tend to then get consumed by the auto installers that people are building in languages that support some form of auto installation. 
In the open tracing special agent, we had, had to pick up terms for these. We call them instrumentation plugins and tracer plugins. I don't know if that helps. Thank you. Cool. I'm just going to include a link to the open, tel open telemetry registry here. beans well it's good to be back um, just just from this review right here it sounds like you know the main thing is we need to um, make sure we're being responsive to discussions in the specification repo and we need to to kind of uh, batten down the final details of like what an initial AP uh, beta launch would be uh, so I'm going to go around and, and try to do some cat herding uh, on, on those two fronts over the next couple of days. So uh, uh, expect to hear from me on Gitter. By the way, uh, Tristan added a comment, like, need a glossary. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, I just started looking at the registry stuff and we definitely need some better documentation on how to add stuff to the registry. It's extremely sparse at the moment. Okay. But yeah, basically I think you just make a YAML, a YAML file. Um, and, yeah, and I can, I'm, I'm sure I can figure it out. We just probably need to write some documentation <laughs> so it's easy. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. In general, the the website needs more more content and links and explanations for a lot of these things we're about to do. So, kind of cleaning the website up and making that a more useful resource for the community and all the people coming in on on our way to beta. That's that's also important. If people want to help with that. Um, uh, Austin Parker uh, Lightstep tends to hold it down. I'm going to help him, uh, but uh, I'm sure we could use more hands on deck uh, just writing explanations of all of this stuff uh, for the community. Cool. We got 15 minutes left, but it seems like we're done with our agenda. Do people yeah. have any? final items or do you want 15 minutes back? Well, well, you know, a lot of reviews can be done in those 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, go approve my PR, 4.30, please. <laughs> cool, cool, yeah. Cool. Well, I you... agree, we're, we can be done now. Okay, so, but but specifically the, the, um, the very first agenda item those those PRs listed there, those are the highest priority things, right, Carlos? Yep. So if people, when they get off the call, if they could go look at those items, that would be great. I'm gonna go blast those into Gitter just to get everybody everybody's attention. Great. Thank you. Okay. See you all the community meeting tomorrow. Have fun, guys. Ciao. See ya. Bye.